Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and I always delay these somehow, even though I keep on promising that I won't. Uh, so, last time we left off on number 7, after a pretty speedy session of about 11 minutes or so. So, now we're starting on number 8, section number 6 of test number 4. So, here's this triangle that has been... Drawn. So, in the figure above, what is the value of C in terms of A and B? So, basically, how can you find the value of C with the values of A and B? So, uh, it takes a while to notice, but really, here, I'm even going to highlight this. So, keep following what I'm doing, and you might have already noticed by now that the angles consist in a trapezoid, so it's in a quadrilateral, so all of these angles must be equal to 360 once you add them up, so there are 1, 2 A's, plus 1, 2, 3 B's, plus a C, must equal 360 degrees. Now, if we subtract 2a on both sides, we get 3b plus c is equal to 360 minus 2a. Sorry, subtract 2a on both sides. Now subtract 3b, so c equals 360 minus 2a minus 3b, and that's our answer. That's choice E. So, oops, there we go. So now we're done with the multiple choice problems of this section, and we're going to move on to the student response. So number nine, which is just an equation. So if t cubed is equal to 351, then what is the value of 4t cubed? So instead of trying to do a square root of 351, and then finding that it doesn't have a cube root, and so on, so forth. It's a messy process. You're just multiplying 4 to the 2t to cube, and t cube is 351. 351 times 4 will be equal to 1404, and that's the correct answer. Our number 10, which I will for once do in the same color as the last problem, which I don't do usually. What is the coordinate of the point on a number line that is exactly halfway between the points with coordinates 53 and 62? All right, so let's draw out this number line as straight as I can. So there's, it goes from 53 to 62. Let me do this. I'm doing it in twos, and I'll show you in a moment. And then we just do this. 54, so that there's enough space. 58, 60, 62. That's 61. 62. All right. So the number exactly halfway. So there are... 10 numbers in this number line. So, um, okay, there are 10 numbers in this number line. Uh, you didn't hear anything. So, there really isn't any halfway when you immediately think of it, but then you need to move on to decimals because uh, halfway would be between 57 and 58. On the left side of 57, there are four numbers. On the right side of 58, there are four numbers. So the number has to be in the middle of those. And the number in the middle of those is 57 plus 58 divided by 2, so the average, which is 57.5. And that's the correct answer. Now, number 11 is a word problem. So... A certain triangle has two angles that have the same measure. If the lengths of two of the sides of the triangle are 50 and 30, what is the least possible value for the perimeter of the triangle? So, oops, there is this 
big isosceles triangle, which we only know that these angles are equal. And the possible side lengths are 30 and 50. And th there can either be two 50 length, two lengths of length 50, two sides of length 50 and or two length sides of length 30. And the other side will be the other length. So it could be a 30, 30, 50 triangle. Or we can draw it again with the same properties, even though not the same shape, really. So 50, 50, 30. So now we need to see which one has the least perimeter. Perimeter of this is 30 plus 30 plus 50, which is uh, 110. And the perimeter of this one is 50 plus 130. I <laughs> have to go through the entire thing. So the perimeter is least in this triangle, and that is the least possible value for the perimeter of a triangle with the pr properties given. So, moving on to number 12, which is more equations, your x and y. Life is all about solving x and y, isn't it wrong? But that's another day. If x squared minus y squared is equal to 77 and x plus y is equal to 11, what is the value of x? So let's write this out x squared minus y squared equals 77, x plus y equals 11. So in your algebra class, if you remember, uh, there's these shortened forms of these equations involving squares and cubes and whatnot, a common quote these days apparently. So the longer form for x squared minus y squared, if you remember, is x plus y times x minus y and if we do some math and magics then this turns into x squared plus yx minus yx uh, minus y squared and which cancels out to x squared minus y squared so bringing back this equation um, we know what x plus y is already x plus y is equal to 11 so x plus y minus x, but times x minus y is equal to 77 because that's equal to x squared minus y squared. x plus y is equal to 11. So 11 times x minus y must be equal to 77. If we divide both sides by 11, then we will get x minus y is equal to 7. Now, now we have these two simple equations, x plus y equals 11 and x minus y equals 7. Now we can use the addition subtraction method in this case to solve this in this problem. So x plus x is 2x, y plus negative y is nothing, 2x is equal to 11 plus 7 which is 18, therefore x is equal to 9 and that is the value of x. So, I might be doing the last problem today, number 13, it's a um, circle with a bitten, cut, sliced, something part, cut out like this, and how about use the color of the filling for the slice or something, there we go. So, Tameka, Tameka, um, if your name is this, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, but Tameka cut a circular pizza into wedge-shaped pieces, one of which is shown above. The tip of each piece is at the center of the pizza, and the angle, and the angle at the tip is always greater than 20 degrees, but less than 30 degrees. What is one possible value for the number of pieces into which the pizza is cut? So, let's do some review. In a circle, there is a total of 360 degrees. And the angle of the slice can be greater than 20, but less than 30. So, x can be... No, that's the other way around. There we go x can be greater than 20 but less than 30. So 
Let's pick an easy number that goes into 360 easily, like, say, 24. It's greater than 20 and is less than 30. So 360 divided by 24 shall be, let's calculate this, 24, uh, 2, 1, 0, 5, 15. And I just needed to do the math. I think I could have done it. But anyways, so 15 slices. That's a possible answer. Now, you can use any any angle between 20 and 30, just excluding those. So you can end up with maybe 13 slices, or 14, or 15, which I just said, or 16, or even 17. Now, mind that you can't say 13.5 slices that because you can't really have half a slice in the great world of SAT so it's just gonna be a whole number no decimals no nothing but the really they never said that the angle has cannot be a decimal so you could have 13 slices of pizza even with uh, a slice angle that is not just a whole number, the one that's a decimal, and it would still work. That would still be correct. So any of these numbers could be your answers, and they're all correct. So I hope this helped you with your math preparation or SAT preparation, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.